congregation of the United Church of Christ. So that means whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And that this household of faith was not complete until you arrived. Here at First Church, we affirm all people. It does not matter your ethnicity, your race, who you love, how much money you make, or maybe the doubts you're having about your faith. All are welcome and affirmed here. And some of us come every week, and some of us haven't darkened the door of a church in a very long time. Regardless, you are welcome, affirmed, and loved here at First Church. It is good to be worshiping together, and we offer a warm welcome if you're visiting us for the first or a second or a third time. We ask everyone to sign the pew pads and then pass them along. And maybe during the passing of the peace, you'll make a new friend or two. Today is a good day because our children get to stay with us in worship, so it might be a little louder than normal, but we love it. We're alive and got lots of energy, and so it is a good day when we can all worship God together. As usual, there's a lot going on here at First Church, so we remind you to read your monthly newsletter, check your email blasts, the announcements in the bulletin, to stay on top of all the things that are happening, and find a way to get involved. If you are visiting and you want to come back and worship with us again, we invite you to come at 8 or 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings and worship with us. It's also a place where we try to find spaces where everyone can help their neighbors in need. In your bulletin, you will see an insert about our Easter offering. All the money that we collect as a part of the offering today, unless otherwise noted, will go to support two great organizations. One is One Great Hour of Sharing, which helps people around the world meet their basic daily needs, and it also assists throughout the year as natural disasters strike all over the world. The other recipient is the Manchester Area Conference of Churches, a longtime partner to First Church. They work right in this area, and they help make sure that our neighbors are fed, clothed, and able to take care of themselves each week. So we ask you to give generously as you are able, and you can give here in person or online to support that offering. And now, friends, let us come to our time to worship. I invite you all to rise and join in the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. It's a morning of joy, a morning of hope, and a morning of love. is reborn. Love is stronger than death. The risen Christ lives among us, calling us to follow and serve. Calling us to be disciples who share God's love and hope in the world.
That was great. Please join me for the prayer of invocation and the Lord's Prayer. God of all the days and daffodils, laughter and lilies, open our hearts to hear once again the story of love overcoming death, of joy drowning out sorrow, of hope emerging from despair. You call dry bones to dance. You give living water so that new life blossoms.
morning. You guys can have a seat right down here. Good morning, friends. I'm going to invite you to come sit with me up here. Good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning. Hello, hello. Come on forward. We have lots of rooms. Beautiful flowers. Hello. Hello. Hi, I love all the Easter colors and the bunny ears I'm seeing. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> right and happy. Hello. Good morning. Okay, who already has had some treats this morning? You all have? Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, we started at about 6.45 with chocolate at my house. So, yeah, we're ready for a nap, huh? That was awesome. So, did anybody get any Easter baskets? You did? Oh, my gosh. What was in those Easter baskets? What was in your Easter baskets? Sour stuff? Yeah. Sour patch, kits. Sour patch kits. Thank you for that. Air. A new, ooh, a cup? A new Stanley cup? What was in yours? Candy and stuff and stuffed animals? Chocolate? What was in yours? Peanut butter cups. Yes, those are so yummy. What was in yours? Jelly beans, so lots of candy and treats and toys and stuff. We expect to find a lot of yummy and fun things in our Easter baskets, right? Well, I brought one today. I'm gonna see if you can help me open it. Can you see what's in there? Pull that cloth off. Let's see, what's in there? <gasps> hmm. What's in there? What is it? Are there, but what kind of eggs? Empty eggs, hmm, that's not what I was expecting expecting to find. What, it, what does that remind you of? What story did people go look for something when they were, what? The Yes. And then when they looked in the tomb, he wasn't there. He wasn't there, it was empty, right? And the rock rolled away and by the, itself. And the rock rolled away. So, but where was Jesus? He was really just with God. You're right, he was risen again, right? He wasn't there, he was risen again. Just like these, if you look at eggs, what comes out of an egg when it hatches? A chicken. A chicken. A chicken. And it's, is it a, is a it a, chicken. Is it a, yes, exactly. Is it a grown up chicken? No. No, it's a baby chicken. Because it's new life. Say it with me, new life. New life. Right, just like Jesus, when he rose again, it was new life for all of us. Do you know why Jesus rose again? Why, why did he do that? What happened? Why? What do you think? He was immortal. His life wasn't finished, right? God's plan was still going. Because do you know how big God's love is? Try it, try it, show me. And so strong that it is stronger than even death. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh huh. It is exactly. It's actually true. So Jesus rose again with new life because God loves us. Does that make you feel good? Makes me feel good. Right. It's, yes. Correct. We can't even show how big it is. That was really good. Yes. And then chicken. Good job. It's infinite. Look at all these words. Hallelujah to all these words. Good job. So much love. That's awesome. Okay, we're going to share this message because we have some new words today. So we, our job, we're going to say Christ is risen. Can you practice that? Christ is risen. Okay, we're going to stand up and turn towards the congregation. Everyone stand up so we can join in. Okay, ready? Okay. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pass the peace. Happy Easter. You can go back to your seats. Okay, you guys get to stay today. <laughs>
and sacred day, let us pray. Holy and divine God, today we joyfully celebrate the miracle of your resurrecting power. Like those disciples so long ago, we have heard the amazing news, and we scarcely believe it ourselves. Amazement overflows in our hearts, and we feel compelled to come to the tomb, seeking Jesus, and to take part in your work for ourselves. Through these last heavy days, you have carried us. It was just three days ago, God, that we were hopeless at Calvary, the place of the skull, as Jesus cried out his last breath. Since that day, we have sat in mourning and fear and bewilderment, but today, everything changed. Today, you have transformed our sorrow. You have brought us from that place to a celebration of the power of your love over all things. Through these days, you have been quietly whispering to us in that still small voice when our hearts are quiet enough to listen. It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. And now we can see. This is the miracle that we needed, God, the miracle that we have been waiting for. We are inspired not only by this amazing thing, but because so often we look around at the world and we see that there is so much that needs your resurrecting power. And so now we hope. God, in you we place hope and trust for the resurrection of so many things. We put our trust in you to roll away the stone of war and abuse and violence and reveal a world of peace and fraternity. We hope in you to bring forth from the tomb of our loneliness and our broken relationships a way to resurrect us to a life of community and connection and purpose. We ask you to unwrap the shroud of illness and addiction from our bodies and uplift us to new life of healing and wholeness. Divine One, if the power of your love can conquer even death, we dare to believe that you might also help us conquer the most broken places in this world that you might root out our inclination to benefit from the exploitation of others, and in turn resurrect a world free from poverty, free from prejudice, a world where every single being lives in harmony with each other and with you, a world where we recognize everything that we have been given as a blessing from you, and we respond with a benevolence and a spirit of generosity that shocks those around us. We hope for a world where the term Christian is universally synonymous with compassion and understanding and a burning conviction to work for the poor, to uplift the downtrodden, to care for the widow and the orphan, to tend the sick, to liberate the imprisoned, to welcome the stranger and the foreigner, and to see your divine reflection in every face and to preserve your natural creation. Dare we hope all that, God? Dare we? If the tomb is empty, then all things are possible, we pray. Amen. passages. The first is from the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah. The people of Jeremiah's time were feeling pretty lost and hopeless. Jeremiah's message that we will soon hear reminded the people that they had not been forgotten or abandoned and that God would always be with them, even when they strayed from God's commandments. God had not forgotten them and always promises to love, forgive, and be faithful. As Christians, we recognize Jeremiah's promise of God creating a new covenant fulfilled in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we find grace and love and hope. Think of Jesus and what Jesus did in his life with welcoming the stranger, healing the sick, loving the outcast. That's what we're called to do. It is Easter, 
and we are called to recommit our lives to following Jesus. And Jesus lives because of you and me. That second passage you will hear will sound familiar. Just like Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, in the story we will soon hear, we live in fear and joy. We live looking for grace and love and then sharing it with others. Listen carefully. These words are holy. Our first reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 1 through 5. And when that happens, God decreed, it will be plain as the sun at high noon. I'll be the God of every person in Israel, and they shall be my very own people. This is the way God put it. They found grace out in the desert. Israel, out looking for a place to rest, met God out looking for them. God told them, I will never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love and more love. And so I'll start over with you and build you up again, dear Israel. You'll resume your singing, grabbing tambourines and joining the dance. You'll go back to your old work of planting vineyards on the Samaritan hillsides and sit back and enjoy the fruit. Oh, how you'll enjoy those harvests. Our second reading is from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came back and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then, go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, and with fear and great joy, ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
So I have a question for you. This is a raise hands, participatory question. How many of you have ever woken up with a song stuck in your head? The choir knows I'm gonna turn around and look at them, so good job. Well, what would you expect a pastor to wake up with but church hymns, of course. So it was earlier this week and I woke up humming, let us talents and tongues employ, I know, it's very famous, right? So um, there's a running joke in our church office about this. It's a communion hymn, and it's kind of got this peppy beat. Don't worry, I won't sing it for you. But there's a joke because we say that we should sing it every communion Sunday. So when I woke up with these words and, the, and humming the tune, I thought, hmm, Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt gives us love to tell, bread to share, God, Emmanuel, everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. Jesus lives. We're here on Easter morning to proclaim that Jesus lives, to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, and it's a day when we make promises again to follow Jesus, to go out into the world of doubt, to go out to share grace and love. But let's be honest, there's a lot of sadness in our world. That same morning that I woke up singing, Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt. I headed to my favorite coffee shop in Middletown, which as I told the two earlier services will remain remain anonymous so that when I'm writing my sermons, I get some quiet time. So I went to the coffee shop, parked my car, went and found my favorite table, got my chai tea and thought, oh boy, It's Easter Sunday. What am I going to preach about? I maybe made the wrong decision because I opened up NPR and started reading the headlines. With Russian troops on the offensive, Ukraine's second largest city is taking the drastic step of moving classrooms for primary and secondary education underground. Search and rescue teams scour water after Baltimore Bridge collapse. EPA's new rules to clean up heavy trucking met with criticism. Doctors visiting a Gaza hospital are stunned by the war's toll on Palestinian children. Conflict in Haiti has exasperated the health crisis. Tears stream down my face What am I to preach about? And then in our own lives, when a diagnosis comes, when a relationship vanishes, when a job is lost, when addiction takes over. But we're Easter people, right? We live in that paradox. But then those words of let us talents and tongues employ came back to me. Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt, gives us love to tell, bread to share, God Emmanuel everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. We are an Easter people. So yes, we acknowledge the sadness of our lives and of the world, but we also know that Jesus lives because of you and me. Easter is about God having the last word and not the Roman government. Easter is about remembering God's words, do not be afraid, and doing this life thing together. Easter is about finding grace and love and then sharing it in the world. It was on Valentine's Day that I read an article about Gary, a Boston native. Before moving into his apartment at 140 Clarendon Building in Boston's upscale Back Bay neighborhood, 
the former mail courier had slept in a homeless shelter for two years. You see, he quit his job to take care of his mom and dad who were sick. And once they passed away, he didn't have a home. In the shelter, Gary explains that the only place for quiet was the bathroom because he shared a bunk room with 30 or 40 other men. Now Gary has a studio with a bathroom and a kitchenette. Gary says the solitude of his own place is magnificent. You see, you might say, so Kate, why are you telling me about Gary on Easter Sunday? But you see, 140 Clarendon Building may look like a regular building in this wealthy community in Boston, but it's for those who are struggling with housing insecurity. When private plans for that hotel building fell through during the pandemic, Community associations and developers and area nonprofits worked together and backed a permanent supportive housing community in the heart of Boston's wealthiest neighborhood. 140 Clarendon is highly unusual because you know what most neighborhoods say? Not in my backyard. But that's not what Jesus calls us to do. Permanent supportive housing often face, faces opposition, especially in wealthy areas. Saying, not in my backyard, but instead, this Boston community rolled out the welcome mat. In this situation, the neighbors, the businesses, the nonprofits boldly proclaimed all people are welcome in my backyard. There's 111 studio apartments that now house Gary and his new neighbors. In the building is social services so that folks can get the services they need. But it has been determined that housing is the first step to getting back on your feet. The article ends with Gary expressing his gratitude for a place to live and a refrigerator to call his own. Friends, we know the Old Testament stories of prophets and people searching for hope, searching for grace and for love. We know that Jesus lives that out in his life, healing the sick, welcoming the children, and the orphans and the outcast. Jesus is alive, friends, when we declare yes in my backyard, when we work for a just world, and sometimes it's one refrigerator at a time. Easter is a reminder for us Christians that Jesus lives because we stand up, because we support each other and work together. For those of you who know me, you know that I love working with children and youth, and I am convinced that it is often the children and youth that teach us the most important lessons in life. It was years ago that I read a story by author Glennon Doyle. She was going to a middle school track meet. What joy that must have been, right? She was saying she was kind of dreading going, but that she was so glad she did. Her son was running in the race, and she describes as the people were sitting in the stands, it was a race like none other, the fast ones, did well, and the cheering was immense. You could tell they were working hard, but they were in. The middle ones, you know, they were huffing and puffing, but they made it to some cheers, although the cheers were dwindling by this point. And then came the last ones. You know, those kids who were a little embarrassed, having a hard time getting to the finish line. Not many people were cheering at this point. 
And Glennon explains this amazing thing that happened where those fast ones who had been done for minutes got up off the bench and went to run with the last one. They surrounded her in blue jerseys and chanted her name until that last one finished the race. Glennon explains how deep in their bones those young people knew that we do this life thing together and that we take care of the lost and the last, that we take care of the vulnerable and the sad. While I was driving to church after working that morning in the unnamed coffee shop, in Middletown, as I was informed that there are only so many coffee shops in Middletown and I will be found. But as I was driving, don't do this, what I did, but I was pulling onto Main Street and I was heading to church and I look up and there's a van and it says, Amazing Grace. I take out my phone, shh, don't tell anybody, and take a picture while driving the car of the Amazing Grace truck because it had to be on the bulletin cover. Amazing Grace. If only we open our eyes to see it, it's all around. Amazing Grace is part of St. Vincent de Paul, a nonprofit in Middletown that we are supporting as our church school mission project. Amazing Grace is a food pantry I served as a kid at St. Vincent de Paul. It was a full circle moment. That's what the Easter message is all about. On Easter morning, on this morning, may we remember that Jesus lives because of us. Jesus lives because we find the lost and the last, and we run the race of life together. Jesus lives because we buy, build affordable housing, we write letters to our legislators, we feed those who are hungry, and we live out our faith each and every day. Jesus lives because we dream boldly and share grace and love wherever we go. Jesus lives, friends, because we live. And that's an Easter message to remember. Alleluia and amen.
good the first time and the second time. <laughs> now please join us in our commissioning and benediction for Easter Sunday. Dance, celebrate, and shout for joy. Christ is risen and is always with us. Inspiring us to follow faithfully. Dream boldly. Love generously. Sharing the compassion and hope of Jesus always. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thank <laughs> you. 